your phone, can you just sneeze? <coughs> ah! We're good, we just sneeze again. No we don't? Yes we do? No we don't? Huh? My eyes are watering. <laughs> Jay and today I'm here with my Cramathon Summer Round wrap up. I completed all seven of the challenges that we put forward. So without further ado, let us get started. The first challenge that I completed was to read a book that's been on your TBR for a very long time. So I read The Telling by Alexander Saroy. I'm pretty sure this was on my shelf for like two years. The book follows Lana who spent her entire childhood hearing stories from her older stepbrother Ben. These stories fueled her summer with adventure and make-believe and it always left Lana and Ben as the heroes over their villains. Ben is killed unexpectedly and this leaves Lana as a shadow of herself and while she's trying to pick up the pieces of her crumbling life she ends up finding a body at the bottom of the spring with her friends. The body ends up being Ben's ex-girlfriend Maggie which makes her a suspect once the police make a connection between the two. Then the bodies start piling up and Lana soon realizes that each murder has a strange connection to the stories that Ben used to tell her. I ended up giving this book a 4 out of 5 stars. I did not think that I was gonna like it as much as I did because I read The Creeping by this author and I absolutely hated it so I was a little bit skeptical going into it but I'm actually really glad I picked it up. I think the best part of the story was how the connection between Ben's stories and the murders actually came together. It was really interesting. The only like major complaint I had about the book was the length. I feel like it could have been cut down like 100 to 150 pages and it still would have gotten the same story across. Kind of just became repetitive at the end but it was still pretty enjoyable to read about so four out of five stars. The next book I have might be a little bit of a cheat for the challenge that I'm using it for. It is The Glittering Court by Rochelle Mead and I am using this as my book with my favorite color on the cover. As you can probably tell there's actually no purple on the front cover, but there's purple on the back cover, so we're counting it, it counts, whatever. I wanted to complete all four challenges, all right, so leave me alone. This book follows a countess named Elizabeth who is told by her grandmother that she needs to marry in order to save her family's fortune. She decides to take matters into her own hands by changing her name to Adelaide. She ends up trading identities with her maid in order to become one of the girls who is shipped off to the Glittering Court. The Glittering Court is basically a finishing school which teaches young girls how to be ladies and then they're later married off to very influential leaders of the world. While the girls travel by ship to the new world of Adornia, Adelaide is able to travel under the radar of everybody except for Cedric Thorne who is the young son of the founder of the Glittering Court. As time goes on and the attraction between Cedric and Adelaide grow, she needs to make the tough decision of what she's going to do with her life. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars as well. I really enjoyed it. It started off very slow and I didn't think that I was going to like it very much but as the story progressed it got a lot more interesting and I became very invested in the story. At the beginning I hated the main character Adelaide. I thought she was going to be this whiny annoying brat but she definitely grew on me as the story went on. I really liked the relationship between Cedric and Adelaide. I think that they were very cute together and I really enjoyed the banter between them. They were both super sassy and your girl loves sassy characters. I definitely would not call this a fantasy novel. More like a contemporary to be honest. Her historical fiction kind of mashup thing, but definitely not a fantasy. I don't really know why. It's labeled as that. I also really liked the friendship between Mira, Tamsin, and Adelaide. I thought they were so supportive of each other and I just really liked that dynamic. One reason I only gave it a four out of five stars is because everything just seemed to work out so well for every single character. It kind of took the suspense away completely because it was kind of like something bad would happen and you'd be like, okay, but like it's going to be fixed for them in two pages. So like, do I really care? No. I'm definitely intrigued by this series. I know that there's two more books coming out following Tamsin and Mira. So I'm very interested to see how those come together because I kind of do want to know more about those two. I also really want to see where Cedric and Adelaide ended up because I'm pretty sure they'll probably be in the other two books but I need to know because it was actually really good. The next book that I have, I have a full review up so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on my full thoughts. If you guys want to know my full thoughts then check out the review but I used it for the challenge of Out of My Comfort Zone because it's a fantasy novel and your girl does not read fantasy. She reads thriller suspense 
contemporary and that's pretty much it. But it is The Last Namsara by Kristen Cicerelli. 5 out of 5 stars. I'm obsessed. I love it so much. Check out my full review, but like dragons. That's all I'm gonna say. The next book that I have I used for the challenge not your typical book format and I chose a graphic novel and it's Check Please by Ngozi Ukazu and I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars as well. If you guys have not heard of this, it is the cutest web series in the entire world. I'm gonna have a full review up on my channel later on in the month once I film it because I just haven't done it yet. Why? I don't know because I suck. But it was super cute, adorable, like oh, I cannot wait to get my hands on the next four years of Eric Biddy's little life. He's a sweet little cinnamon roll and I want to protect him at all costs and that's all I'm going to say for now but check out my full review once it's up. The next book that I have I used for the challenge predicted five star reads. It was not a five star read but I really did think that it was going to be. It was Hidden Bodies by Caroline Kepneys and I ended up giving it a four out of five stars which I mean like close to five stars but not quite. I don't want to give a full synopsis because it is the second novel. It basically picks up right off where you ended and I wanted to like it so much more than I did but it became super predictable. Caroline Kepneys ended up taking away the second person narrative which is one of the reasons why I loved you so much because it was so unique. So this wasn't as unique as you so it kind of brought the rating down for me because I was expecting it to be like you. I did still really enjoy it. I still love Joe as a main character which I know is so weird, but you can't help but rooting for him. He's still creepy as hell, but something about that boy gets me every time. Another reason I only gave it 4 out of 5 stars is that the ending was really disappointing to me. I wanted more than what I got. It was super vulgar though, to the point where it just got annoying after a while because every other word was like the C word or like just something to do with sex and it was like, okay, we get it. You like to have sex move on. Let's go. The next book that I used was for the challenge of the LGBTQIA plus own voices novel and I chose Before I Let Go by Marike Nijkamp. I ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. It follows Cory and Kyra who are inseparable until Cory has to move from their small town of Lost, Alaska. Cory asks Kyra to wait for her when she returns later that year. A few days before Cory is supposed to return to Lost, she ends up discovering that Kyra died. She believes that something very sinister happened surrounding Kyra's death and she decides that she's going to discover the truth. So like I said, I ended up giving it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. I really wanted to like it a lot more than I did. Half the time I was honestly confused with what the heck was going on in this story. I couldn't tell if it was paranormal or not. I also just felt that the characters were super one-dimensional and I just didn't care about what happened to any of them. I didn't care about the mystery behind Kyra's death. I didn't care about this book and that's why I rated it so low. Overall, I just think that the book wasn't my cup of tea at all. I just, I didn't care. And then the final book I read was for the challenge of read seven books and it was Animus and this is by Antoine Ravoy. This is another graphic novel and I just read it because, you know, it's quick, it's fast, it's easy. I did not like it. I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. It follows a haunted playground in Japan where these two children end up going and they meet this little ghost named Toothless and in order to free Toothless from this haunted playground they need to discover who he actually is and it's basically the story of them figuring out who he is. But honestly it was so boring and just bland. There's no color which I mean does help with like the eeriness of the story but it just couldn't grab my attention at all. Again, it was one of these books that I just didn't care for. It was a super quick read which was beneficial for the readathon but I didn't care about the story. I didn't care about what happened. I didn't care about Toothless and therefore I just didn't really enjoy it. Alright guys, so that was my Cramathon wrap-up. I completed all seven challenges, which is super exciting in my opinion. Let me know down below if you guys completed all seven challenges or what challenges you completed and what you read for them. Thank you so much for joining us for this round of Cramathon. Stay tuned to our Twitter and all that jazz for the next round, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!